Hello, in this video we're going to talk briefly about redirects. So I'm not going to cover redirects thoroughly because there's many ways you can do it. Um, it's pretty simple. It's a one-liner. Basically it is this function right here. It's a header function. There's actually several ways to implement it. There are strategies such as like a delayed redirect. Sometimes you see those where it's like, uh, you know, within five seconds you're going to get redirected to another page. Sometimes it's an instantaneous redirect like this. Uh, so it's used to move your users from one page to another, and it's usually based on some information not being present, usually. Um, so this is the instant refresh. Um, so this part right here is the address or the URL of the resource that you want them to be directed to. It is supposed to be a fully qualified URL, so like www.something.com slash something. That is what you call a relative URL. Uh, that's going to work but it's not the way that it's intended to be used. So what this says is I'm on this page called redirect. If this thing called thing is not there, they're going to be redirected to this page. Otherwise, this is going to happen. So oftentimes these are at the very top of your page wrapped in a little PHP block because the first thing you want to do is determine whether the user belongs there or not. So I'll show you this page in practice. So it looks like this. There's that little H1. Notice the thing up there, right? There's the, the thing is there. If I get rid of the thing, then I fail the is set, and I get redirected to this please log in page. Now, if you're wondering where that came from, well, that's this page, just a simple little chunk of HTML. Like I said, it's kind of a goofy little demo. So either you're on this page, and that piece of information was up in the URL, or, and you get to see this, or you get redirected to the form. And so let's talk about context for redirects. So this is a very realistic situation where sometimes, you know, you might be, uh, there's certain pages of your website which you might need to be logged in to view. Very easy to imagine, right? Like think about the websites that you use, the websites that you visit. There's some pages where you have to be logged in to see them and some where you don't. On those pages where a user needs to be logged in, it makes a lot of sense to up at the top have a little is set checking whether they're logged in. If they're not logged in, we redirect them back to a home page or redirect them back to a login page. The other place where you're going to get some mileage out of this is in something like this. All right, so here's a little web page. It's this is basically what I would term as dynamic content. If I click on one of these games, I get to view the details on it. Right? You kind of see how it functions. Uh, so here's how this under the underlying principle here is that I've got these like when you click on one of the the each one of these games it takes you to a page called details and each details page is populated by that information which is being passed via the get method in the URL and so if someone wanted to do something malicious like that like notice what happens like what am I supposed to do now now that that information is not there what game information am I supposed to pull up well I just redirect them back to the search page. And that's another example of a redirect. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to redirect someone. And always the underlying, I think always, is the, uh, the underlying principle is that something's missing. Whether those are some login credentials or maybe some information that that need, page needs to process and display correctly. And so one way that we can remedy that is with a redirect. Like I said, you can redirect in many different ways, but please understand that that redirect does need to, it's usually going to be wrapped in some kind of a, an if block. So if something's missing, send them to the page where they need to be, otherwise display the page. Now the last part to talk about, which is a really important thing, is uh, basically this header function here. So when you redirect somebody, you're using HTTP headers to carry that out that redirect. You don't need to, know, need to know much about HTTP headers, but I'm going to tell you that HTTP headers are sent before the contents of the web page. Now what that means to you is you are not allowed to call this function before, um, or, or you're not allowed to call this function after you have HTML on the page. Notice my HTML is below it. That's okay. This... Um, scenario right here is not okay. It won't work. So you are not allowed to have HTML before the header call. So typically when you see a redirect on a page like this, it's going to be it's going to be in the first opening little uh, PHP block on the page. If you watch much of my, many of my examples, you'll notice I always go straight into PHP tags because I know that if I need to call that header function, that that needs to happen before any of my HTML. Now the trickier part is this. 
literally that right there, I just literally pressed, I just pressed enter, right? I pressed it three times. If I just press enter one single time before uh, I open my PHP tags, that's gonna make it not work. Like literally that right there, that counts as HTML being sent to the user and that will make my redirect not work. And so this is kind of right, just getting out there a little bit, but um, this is the kind of mistake that you will get, you can get away with in, in uh, XAMPP, but you can't get away with it on a real web host. So, so sometimes you're gonna notice that when you put together pages that have redirects, you might notice that they work locally, but they don't work remotely. And the chance, chances are that that is because you have HTML being sent to the browser before your PHP block. So always just go straight into your PHP blocks. You can't afford to have even a single uh, white space character. So that's a tip in implementing redirects. Hopefully you can use these to create a more user-friendly, uh, maybe even secure your website a little bit better. Thanks for watching.